This video was brought to you by Surfshark VPN. At the beginning of each Formula 1 season, drivers visit their factories and jump into a test chassis to create their very own race seats, something which both Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hülkenberg have had to do last minute for the Bahrain Grand Prix. But there is a new way these race seats are made, and with the help of Rude Equip, we're going to be making my very own race seat and showing you the entire process from start to finish. And for our example, we'll be using an LMP2 car, but this method is the same used in Formula 1. Now this whole process breaks down into four main parts, and it all begins with the founder, Vaughan Cartwright. Yeah, I'd always been involved with the uh, race seat for, for drivers throughout my motorsport career. Progressed all the way up into Formula One, where I joined the McLaren team in 1997. Having looked back at my experience in Formula One, how much attention to detail was required, took the decision to start the business. I can say there's five F1 teams that we do work with. Probably the one that we can be public about is the Haas F1 team. Also Formula Two, Formula Three, Formula E, which we're very active in. The World Endurance Championship, LMP1, LMP2, as we're doing with you today. It's the one component on the car that the driver can truly own. Part one is the pre-fit stage. In most FIA racing categories, they require these carbon fiber shells which act as the base, and then in that is where the driver's specific seat mold will go into. The driver jumps into that shell and starts to pick out areas in which they're needing more support on. Oh, oh this is surreal. <laughs> like my legs currently are currently sort of arched a little bit, so I'm having to use like the muscle underneath my legs to like keep them up. Just at the bottom here, there is a small like if that's the seat insert, my back's a little bit like that. Right, there's no graceful way of getting out, I guess. <laughs> the material they'll be making my first mold is thousands of these polystyrene microbeads within a plastic bag. This bag goes into the carbon shell and the driver sits on top, almost like a big bean bag. At the moment, there's two philosophies in terms of making a custom seat. You've got the vacuum version, which is this, or you've got expanding foam. So it's two liquids, causes a chemical reaction and it expands very quickly. You know, your position to the steering wheel, your position to the headrest, your height for legality, your lower back support. You've got to think of all that within like five minutes. Whereas this way, yes, it's a longer process, but it means we can be more methodical and more detailed and getting everything 100% right. The beads can then be moved around to get the correct driving position while still making it comfortable for myself and finding areas where my body needs more support. To keep the beads from moving around, we can then use a vacuum form to suck up all the air out of the bag. They do this process first without any resin so they can make adjustments moving the beads around and finding what parts of my body needs more support and if they need to add any additional beads they can do so. It's kind of just moving it around with my hips and my yep. my ass effectively. I probably need to move my bum a bit more forward because I feel like I'm a bit high at the moment. It's a little tight on my hips. Okay. The right side is fine, the left side is a bit tight. The left shoulder is pushed in a okay. bit, so I'm kind of like skirting okay. around. Yeah, that's much better. There we go. Exactly. So the more input you can give me, yeah. the better I can modify the material to suit exactly what you want. So if you position your leg so it's, it's comfortable on the throttle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then again, I don't want to push you over too far. Yeah, that feels fine. I feel very central to it. Oh, God, it's, <laughs> it's a lot tighter to get up. <laughs> Recently, I was lucky enough to be in Bahrain for the Formula 1 testing and filmed a very special video which I'll be uploading very soon. And whilst out there, I wanted to watch the 2013 film Rush on Netflix. But to my surprise, I couldn't actually watch it because it wasn't available in my country, which I can only assume was because Netflix didn't have the broadcast or film rights in Bahrain. But lucky for me, I was able to fix that problem because I use today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN can swap your location of your device with a new one, meaning you can virtually travel to a different country. So in my case, although I was in Bahrain, I could swap my location to being back home here in London and can watch the film like normal. But it's not just limited to the UK. Surfshark has over 3,000 servers across 65 countries, and it does all of this whilst encrypting all of your information, keeping your personal data safe from cyber criminals and big companies trying to get data from you. So if that sounds right, up your alley, the lovely folk at Surfshark are giving you guys an 83% off discount plus three extra months for free when you use my promo code Matt Amos. And there's also a 30 day money back guarantee, so you can try out the awesome service. And if it's not really for you, then it's no risk in cancelling. So click the link in the description to find out more. Thanks to them for supporting the channel. Now let's get back to making my racy. Part two, and it's time to add the resin. A two part resin and hardener is mixed up and added into the bag we used earlier with some added black dye, making it easier to visually see where the resin is and that it spreads out evenly. This has a one hour working window where the beads can still be moved around freely around the driver and will take about three hours further to fully cure to become hard. So once the resin has been equally distributed across the bag, it is then put back into the carbon shell. And I go. Yeah. Back actually feels pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I still get a bit of pressure on the left side. Okay. 
you're naturally relaxed there. Yeah, they're good. And you can feel the support underneath. Yeah, I can feel the support underneath, that's good. Well, I always do on the side of caution, make it quite tight mm -hmm. because we always can shave off a little bit of material. You can't add it. You yeah. can't add it. There you go. <laughs> Again, it's down to personal preference. Some drivers really like it tight across the shoulders and, and other drivers just want a little bit of room so they can almost like yeah. go karty and in, into the corner. No, I, I, I prefer it, yeah, more stuck on and that's, yep. yeah, they just, I just needed some movability there. Yep. Yeah, I've just pushed it back a bit more on my left shoulder, but that's fine now. You wouldn't believe it, but I used to be a contortionist. <laughs> Vaughn now smooths out those sections of the seat where folds or creases have occurred as a result when we move the beads around my body. And as the bag is still vacuumed, it means it won't lose its shape with me not sitting in it. I then climb back into the cockpit for any final adjustments, but if it's all comfortable, my job is then to sit in there for an hour whilst it all cures around me. Well, the minimum is about 20 minutes, but ideally you want to be in here as long as you can. So we're gonna, we're gonna wait for about an hour or so just so then all the resin can properly cure and get all hard. My main thought process was gonna be like a go -kart where you do have a bit of wiggle room whereas here I cannot move at all like this is me <laughs> trying to move and I can't it's also just quite a weird thing to just have a have a coffee in a cockpit <laughs> just while I'm waiting after the curing is finished and I've climbed out of the very tight seat it's on to part three where we trim down the seat's excess the bag is designed to give us scope to be able to make sure that we fully encapsulate the driver within the car obviously that it leaves some excess material so we we cut that material off to get the seat back down to the right profile remove any excess material and we also cut out the holes for the lap belts and crutch belts. We can make sure that the, the seat is not interfering with any elbow uh, issues when you're, when you're turning. We uh, use an electric hot knife. Uh, it's the most uh, practical way for us to be able to quickly and efficiently remove all the excess material. It feels very weird because cut, it cuts like butter. It's yeah. so smooth. <laughs> so this is a hand rasp. So what we're doing now is just smoothing it all out, getting a nice clean surface, just getting rid of all these little ripples, yeah. tidy it up clean it all up, just get it nice and smooth across the ribs. Normally what happens is that the seat goes back into the car, then I would jump in and then you'd start to see if there's any weird pressure points that I want sort of taken out. But unfortunately, because I've got a bit of a phobia with polystyrene, we can't sort of do that because otherwise I'll be trapped by the very thing that I'm very scared of. So the guys have done an awesome job of just taping it up for me, but what we can still do is get into the car and then sort of mark out any areas and with Sharpie, if there's any areas I need adjusting, or if it's pretty good, then they can just carry on like this. This is so fucking cool! This is so cool! <laughs> the last part is to make this FIA approved. The team laser scans the seat which slowly builds up a 3D CAD model. This can either be sent to the teams to then create their own carbon fibre shell, or in McLaren's case, one created using natural fibres, or Real Equip can create one using a CNC machine. This loads up a 3D scan seat and carves out the model using one of the approved materials listed by the FIA, which in this case is an R-Pro expanded polypropylene. This has been such an awesome day, and obviously none of this would have been made possible without the help of Real. Please go check out their website. They've got such an awesome portfolio on there on all the different type of work they do. Massive thanks to them, and also a big thanks to our sponsor today, Sir. Shot VPN. As a reminder, their link is down in the description below. Really hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next video.